Hey guys, Club Fair, and today we're going to cover copying, well, comparing strings or MBT. So, for example, do you want to see if one item is the same? Is this crimson plank the same as this one? Or is this sword the same as this one? Um, and we're just going to cover all sorts of comparing. Uh, where we can compare strings, we can compare uh, MBT, we can compare Telra. Sometimes it doesn't work out in the way that you expect it to, and sometimes it does. It all just depends on the situation. So this is going to be specifically dynamic comparing, and this is just a very short kind of concept, but it's powerful um, and very useful in a lot of different ways. Um, but this is dynamic comparing. Obviously, it's pretty easy. You can throw this thing down, throw that thing down, and then you say if that you just go like look for that guy and then MBT equals and then type in all the stuff you want. This is going to be specifically any item I throw, it'll work for any item that is there. Um, and I guess as an example, I'll have two entities. I'll do an armor stand show arms 1B. Stupid. Okay. Uh, and I'll give him a uh, golden hoe. And we'll compare it with the item I'm holding. And you can do this with items on the ground. You can do this with anything. Okay. So this is pretty actually, it's simple but complicated at the same time. So it's understandable that people don't necessarily know how it works. Um, so basically, let me just minimize these so that it's less distracting. All right. So let's go with compare MBT. And this is really could be done in one function. The context matters. So you'll have to establish context yourself. Okay, so we'll do uh, the context for this will be, and that's actually important. So I'll do it in a command block just so that it's easier to look at. So execute at, at P, as, at E, type equals armor stand, sword equals nearest, the limit equals one. So keep in mind the context here and then run function test colon compare MBT and it's okay that nothing showed up there. All right, so at at P as the armor stand. So that means that any time in this function, when I type the when I type at P, it'll be multiplayer friendly and only pick me, myself, and I. If you're really concerned, you can tag the player before running the function and then reference the tagged player in the function and then remove the tag immediately after. Um, common trick. So it would be like tag at as add. Uh, me and then tag at s remove me and then function compare mbt you would do something like that and then inside this function me would be the specific person but at p should be multiplayer friendly okay so we're going to be working with data storage so you have to do you have to make a data storage spot so let's do data modify storage test one and uh, temp is the path set value all right, so we'll just do that. So when we do data get storage test one, it will have temp colon ID colon one. So there's kind of like you have this storage element and if it doesn't exist, it'll create it for you anyway. And the storage element basically just has uh, is like a place to hold MBT, which is very useful for us. Uh, so we are going to modify the storage of test one and we're going to set it from at S, which will be the armor stands hand items. So if I type reload, and uh, I get this button and I do data pack disable. Oh, now we're good. And I click the button. Then when I get that temp, then boom, it has a golden hoe count one B tag damage zero. Okay. Uh, so it's getting onto that location. Obviously before you play this, you would probably want to make sure or clear that storage spot. So you can do uh, slash data remove storage test one temp just to clear it you would do that like before this function because this function is going to loop so you want to do this thing outside of the looping function uh, or well not necessarily loop like it could loop so i guess we can do it in here for good practice but just be careful if you decide to remove do a loop you don't uh add this to it anyways so this we can just clear it in the beginning just in case there was something on there before um so then to contest if they're the same, we're literally at that step, it's three commands. So execute store re success. So if it succeeds onto a score and we'll do bool and we'll do global, uh, bool, percent bool is just a fake player, nothing special about it. So scoreboard sidebar global, scoreboard trick this add global. Okay, so now we have global in the sidebar. So then 
the success of this command gets stored onto bool. So then we can do run. And what command are we doing? It's the same one as this one, except instead we're copying it from the player's selected item. Okay, so let's talk about what this is going to do. So you're going to clear temp, then we're going to put the item that we're looking to, that we're checking onto temp. Then we are going to put the item from the player onto temp. Now, if they are the same, then the command will give you an error. So let me show you that real quick right here. So I'm going to type this and they are the same. Uh, well, okay, I'll do it again. So they are the same now. So we had the, uh, there's a hoe on there and you can see nothing changed. So nothing changed gives you a result of zero for success because it can't play the command. And then when they're different, it'll give you a result of one. So execute if score percent bool global matches zero run say matched. Okay, so this will say that they're matched if it's zero because it failed. So if we put this all together, um, it will, through this logic, it will actually uh, fail when it will it will say matched if you don't have anything in your hand but uh, if you do have something in your hand it won't say matched unless that thing is exactly the same uh, and that's pretty much it uh, you can come up with the edge conditions to make sure that they're the same so you could have like unless the player doesn't have something in their selected item or maybe copy from the player first or just double check before running the compare that both things have items uh, and you can come up with these conditions now one thing that i want to say to be careful of so when you give yourself like a custom named item, sometimes when you drop it on the floor or if it gets brought in from a loot table, depending on where it came from, uh, the custom name MBT stuff like this kind of text components will be in a different order than when you placed it, which would make it considered a different item. Uh, so comparing the MBT won't work. Also, um, if I do a golden hoe with a custom name, then it will not show up as the same because they're different. Uh, and if this is your intention, then that's good. See, it won't say matched, but it will say for this one. If that's your intention, that's good. But if you want to, you can uh, reduce the amount of stuff that it's doing. Like you can be a little less specific by just copying the ID of the item. So this would be like ignoring uh, custom stuff uh, or information about it. So now it'll say matched for both because now it's just copying the word golden hoe. Uh, so you can be a little bit more or less specific to check like um, is if you care about certain things. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, just three, two, two commands, and then a third one here. Uh, if you need to check for successive things, you would just loop this thing until you get a match or until you're uh, through all of your array of elements. And uh, checking if they match with this basically one two command line is very commonly used uh, in things that involve MBT. So uh, hopefully you guys found that useful. If there's anything else you guys want to see, let me know. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.